How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about The Creeps, issue number 24 from June 2020. And uh, before I begin, I'll go ahead and talk about how I found this one. Um, so basically, as I've mentioned in a previous video, I've been watching a ton of Tales from the Crypt and I've been wanting to find um, the original comics for Tales from the Crypt. So I went to my Barnes & Noble, hoping to find some of the reprints, which unfortunately they didn't have, even though the Dark Horse reprints aren't too terribly old, I don't believe. Um, however, why I didn't find Tales from the Crypt, I was bored and flipping through their magazine section and happened to find something similar to Tales from the Crypt. Uh, one of the things... Uh, pretty obviously uh, inspired by it. This is a illustrated horror magazine called The Creeps, which I had never heard of, but I was glad to find something kind of similar to what I was looking for. So this is The Creeps, and I'm going to, you know, talk a little bit about it. Uh, when I open the magazine, though, I um, might pull it aside because uh, the stories are kind of short in here, and I don't want to accidentally show a panel that spoils anything. So I'll show a little bit of the art from each story, but I'm going to not show too much because I really don't want to spoil anything for you guys. And these are kind of short stories. Uh, but to open it up, I'm going to flip to the uh, contents page so you can see a little bit of the credits and get an idea for how many stories there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six stories in this magazine. Six stories, they're all more or less seven pages, and the magazine in total is about 50 pages long with a few other things in it, like, you know, a fan club page with a short uh, prose story written by... Um, one of their uh, fan club and the dear old creep uh, where it's like a uh, on recent issues of the creep in our public forum so yeah there are you know kind of bonus materials that do fill in the gap to get to 50 pages um, going to the first story the undertaker of gravesend this one is a western story let me make sure you're in focus um, this one is a western story. You get this guy who's an undertaker and his brother who's the sheriff. And his brother gets shot, but a mysterious man shows up and gives him a special sheriff's badge so that he can become the new sheriff and take his revenge. It's a fun uh, cowboy revenge story. You can kind of tell where it's going. Um, but it is still fun. Um, this next one, Winter's Crossing, you get a uh, car speeding through. They're all trying to get to this bridge, and there are these people, and skeletons show up. I love skeletons as an enemy. They're really cool, but, you know, because they're hard to move in real life because you see the holes in the costume. They're not featured too often in, in movies, you know. But a school people versus skeletons story, um, I, I really liked it. Uh, the front, it says, uh, Wicked Dead Return. So I'm wondering if there was a original version of this story, you know, like a, like a part one. But this, uh, even if these characters have been around before, you don't have to watch that movie to be able to... Or, read that story, rather, uh, to be able to understand uh, this story. So, overall, very fun. It does kind of suffer from the length. You know, it seems to kind of, you know, get into the mode where they wrap everything up really quick and things that could be explained slower just go kind of quickly at the end. Um, really quickly, uh, sorry about the noise. My dog is eating right behind me, so that's my uh, my little dog over there. Um, don't really have uh, too terribly much time to record, so I can't reshoot this. But anyway, um, the next story, Seeds of Destruction. You get some scientist 
who accidentally uh, spill a chemical onto this plant and it grows into a creepy plant monster. Really fun, kind of like a 1950s uh, horror story. Really fun, but again, kind of short and I, I mean, you could do, you know, a whole 50 pages just with this guy, but yeah, fun plant monster and that one very, very 1950s. The next one, um, called Fake ID, you get this vampire, a lot like Dracula, and he's trying to get the woman he loves that look like the, the woman he lost way back in the past, but of course, the uh, boyfriend's thwarting his every attempt, and he can't quite figure out what to do. It's a very classic vampire story, uh, pretty fun, and they do put a unique spin on it uh, towards the end, something that you haven't really seen, at least not in too many other places. Um, story number five. Ah, yes. Come on. <laughs> a little bit to flip through, and like I said, I don't want to spoil stuff. There we go. Uh, story number five, the creep in the iron mask. You know, one of the man in the iron mask stories, you get um, you get a guy who's begging on the street, and one of the king's men comes up to him and realizes that he looks just like the king. So, the king, not wanting a challenge for his power because he's probably like a long-lost sibling, decides to lock him up in the classic man in the iron mask, uh, trope. But... There is a pretty fun spin on it towards the end. Um, the fan club page with the uh, the pros story is right there. And some fan art, um, which I can't uh, show all. There's a tiny bit of nudity there. Not, not bad, but I can't show it on YouTube. And the last one, uh, Into the Vault. This is actually uh, based on a story by H.P. Lovecraft, which I thought was... Uh, really fun, but it's about a drunken uh, undertaker, and he's kind of neglecting his duties, and then the winter comes, and because it's too cold, they can't bury any of the bodies, so he gets his work kind of stacked up in this big tomb, and it gets full of, you know, way more bodies than it should because of the, the snow, and of course he's neglecting his duties, so maybe something will, uh, will come from that. Um, a really good classic story, and it's fun to see them adapting H.P. Lovecraft. So anyway, um, this is really fun. It, it, like I said, a lot of the stories do suffer from the length. They're only seven pages. But you do get, I believe, six of them. This is a 50-page magazine there. So, you know, it is a fair bit of reading. Um, and, yeah, it was fun. And plus, it's only six bucks. So this is something that, I, like I said, I knew nothing about this magazine. Um, but I'll definitely be picking it up each time I see it because this is a Tales from the Crypt style uh, six-story magazine, and if you looked at all the different stories, you get 1950s versus classic monsters, you get the Wild West, the modern day. Uh, you know, if you're going to have a ton of short stories, they really did a smart move by picking all different types of short stories, and plus this cover painting on the front is really fun there, but yeah, they've uh, done this for a while. Flip to the back, you can see all the different covers from this magazine, and then you can actually order from uh, order from them. You actually can do the whole send the money in the mail type deal. But anyway, really fun, and I'll definitely pick this magazine up again if I see it. Um, fun Tales from the Crypt esque, but printed in the modern day. Anyway, I'll be back with more comics in the future. I also want to do some uh, board games and maybe even some uh, some novels. But uh, I do 95% uh, horror on this channel, mostly horror movies. I'll be back again uh, really soon. Thank you guys for watching. And um, 
For those of you who've liked and subscribed, you really do help out the channel. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Um, have a good day.